We call it the monster for a reason. Because if you don't break it, it will hurt. Mori Yoshiba, the founder of Aikido, has said that 90% of Aikido is atemi, aka striking. Yet through my 15 years of training Aikido with various instructors across different countries, I was never taught to properly strike. Later on, I learned modern ways of striking through kickboxing training. But in my journey to understand how functional Aikido would look like, I decided to dig deeper into how traditional Japanese striking works. And who could be better at traditional striking than karate practitioners? Luckily, I knew the perfect person to be my teacher, Jesse Enkamp, aka the Karate Nerd, who agreed to show me what he knows, and at the end of the lesson, give me the ultimate a test, a chance to try to break the monster, the hardest rebreakable board out there. To see what I've learned and if I was successful at defeating the monster, stay tuned for this martial arts journey. How do you think the atomy in Aikido should look like? Well, I can only speak from a karate perspective, and we have two specific types of atemi. One is called the uchi, which means it's a strike. Those mm. are the snapping motions. And then we have a ski, which many people usually translate to punch, but it mm. actually means thrust. And the way you generally practice these in traditional old school karate, especially in Okinawa, is with something called a makiwara, mm. which is the traditional striking post. And maybe we could start with that. Yeah, let's do it. Oh, wait, before we do that, let's just start with something that I usually do with beginners here in my dojo, mm. which is knuckle push-ups the karate way. Mm. Okay, so just copy me. Go down as if you would do a regular push-up, right? But on your knuckles, and not like this. This is what people love to do, right? With a knuckle like that. Sorry, just a second. Huh? Ah. Is it painful? <laughs> Already. The pinky knuckle cannot touch the ground. Only the two major knuckles. So, elbows down. Imagine you wanna break the floor. This way, and then you go down and up. Almost like a regular push-up, but it's modified to help you punch better. Just try one of those. So, like that and like that. Brace your core, squeeze yeah. your glutes. Really important to have a straight spine, good posture, and slowly lower yourself. Very good. And then up. Okay, exactly. Now this teaches you the correct alignment mm. and where to hit with your punch. Great, okay, let's keep going. This is the makiwara. The word itself consists of two parts, maki and wara. Wara is a traditional rope that you usually have around it, and maki means to wrap around. But now the modern version usually has this uh, leather part mm -hmm. instead, because it's just easier. Now, what you want to do first is to understand how to form a fist. And I'm pretty sure you already know this, but in combat sports, you usually have gloves. And if you have a huge glove, then you don't really have mm -hmm. the classical fist inside. So it's important to understand that you have to start by rolling in your fingers and then folding your thumb over. Have a straight wrist, and try to hit with the two biggest parts of the knuckles, okay. exactly. And you want to hit that on the center of the makiwara. There are many different ways of striking. We're going to start with the basic thrust, okay. the ski. Interestingly, ski was a term used in Aikido as well when a punch was executed. But it was done in an awkward way where the attacker made a full step forward while making the punch. So I was curious to finally learn how this strike was taught in karate. The basic way you start is by putting your hand at the hip and then lowering your shoulders, gripping the floor with your feet, mm. and then try to twist your hips a little bit as you thrust out and then punch like that. And you don't wanna snap it back, but you actually wanna apply the concept of ikken hisatsu, which means one strike kill. So you commit to punching through it and not on it. Shoulders and down, shoulders put your breath in the belly, hand on the hip, mm -hmm. and the passive hand can be down here so it's quite relaxed. And now all you do is whip your punch straight into the makiwara. Ooh. Two common mistakes that I immediately noticed. Right. Number one, you punched a lot with your shoulder. Okay. So you wanna depress the shoulder mm. and use your center of gravity. Because mm -hmm. what happens when you use the shoulder is that you lean into the punch, mm -hmm. but you wanna push into the punch mm -hmm. with your whole mass, mm -hmm. not just your upper body. You wanna use hip drive and legs as well. That is better. One more time. Good, stop. This muscle right here needs right. to be active. Mm. The, the lats connect your upper body to your lower mm. body. So you can transfer the power. Shoulder down. Hips and, and also, engage the lat. One more thing, exhale when you punch. Okay. Oh. Good, hold it. If I just do this, mm -hmm. ideally 
your elbow should be pointing down as much as possible. Oh. Yes, exactly. That's okay. really good. Because what happens now is that you get external shoulder rotation, mm. which is how the shoulder creates mechanical stability. And by then you will engage the lats connected to the hips, the legs mm. and the floor. And that's when you have what we call zentai ryoku or full body power. Okay. Try one more. Good. One more. Again. 197 left. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the old master said. You should do 200 punches a day. Oh twice God. on your non-dominant side. So we just did the classical punch, mm. but you can do other stuff as well. We could do a combination of a back fist. Mm. This is called a uraken. This was another interesting point for me, since the back fist strike also came up in some Aikido techniques, such as for example here. And then after the back fist, you would do a kagitsuki, which is a hooking punch. Mm. So you do this, you go one, Two, one, two. You stand parallel with your feet, and this is what's originally known as the horse riding stance. So imagine you're riding a horse. What's the most important thing? To squeeze your legs together. So you want that muscular irradiation. You wanna use your adductors here to get really strong and grip the ground, to stabilize your hips. And then from here you do the first back fist this way, and then the hooking punch that way. Here. Yes, and now mm -hmm. you hit with the top part okay, of your so fist. Here. Exactly. So One. Here and then here. two. You're on the right track, but for this, don't turn your hips like the very first thrust we did. Right. But now I want your hips to twist back. So mm. you're snapping them back. So yeah, like yeah, two. yeah. One, two. Like good, good. After practicing the strikes, it was finally time to move on to the ultimate test. This is the final test. The legendary <laughs> These break are rebreakable boards. Now, this is for six year olds. This is for seven year olds. And this is for grown ups. With blood all over it. <laughs> There's actually real blood on it. So let's start with the, the kitty board. Let's see how that goes. So if I fail with this one. That yeah. means you're a five year old, because this yeah. is for six year olds. So all you do is the same stuff we right. just practiced on okay. the makiwara. So you start like this. Boom. Exactly, yes. And now your right fist will punch. And again, aim behind the board and on the center. Good! Yes! Very good! Seven year old. <laughs> nice. Eight year old. Yes. Blue board, okay. same thing. And remember to exhale when you punch. And sometimes we even scream. That's okay. what we call like kiai. Is there a syllable? Uh, no, and this is a common mistake. A lot yeah. of people think you're supposed to scream, Kia! Yeah, but that's right. like screaming, scream! It's just the term. So there's no specific syllable that I need to use? I asked this same question right. to a yeah. sensei in Japan once. Oh. And he said, if you're on a savanna and there is a tiger coming at you, you cannot run away because it will catch up. And you cannot fight it because it will kill you. All you can do is scream. You would not be thinking about, well, how should I scream? You would just scream. You would just roar at the lion. So that's the idea. It's more about the spirit rather than the sound. Just roar, scream. Yes. Okay, got it. Yes. Ah! I like it. Since I was learning karate striking for the first time, in order to prevent serious injury, we decided that it would be best for me to wrap up my fist. That made the challenge safer, but not easier, since my success depended on how well I will be able to perform the strike itself. We call it the monster for a reason, because if you don't break it, it will hurt. Right. If you break it, it's not that bad. So make sure you aim at the center and go through it, not on it. If I do break this, and if you're not subscribed, you have to subscribe. If I don't break this, I need then like you have to, to subscribe to me. Yeah, you have to subscribe <laughs> to Jesse Shell. Even if you break it, just subscribe. Okay. True. Now, <laughs> lower your breath to the belly. You press your shoulders and exhale as you punch. Yes! Nice. I think I'm gonna do it. Whoa! Awesome! I need it. How does it feel? <laughs> It's a bit painful. <laughs> All the guidance you gave was very good because I was like, I need to like fully commit to this. Probably that's like what Aikido Atomy is supposed to be. It's mm -hmm. like, you're really going for it, you're really committing, and then it opens up new possibilities for whatever you're gonna do. Right, next. and imagine breaking your opponent's rib, mm -hmm. then throwing them right. or controlling them right. becomes way easier, mm -hmm. I would assume. And maybe that's why Atemi is so important in Aikido. If you're interested to see my sparring with Jesse where I tried to apply Kiro against karate, click on this video right here. Until next time, I wish you to own your journey.